In the name of Allah, all praise is due to Allah. Welcome to the Pearls of the Prophet. Peace be upon him. I'm your host, Abdul Rahim, and I have with me Muhammad Al Nakawi. Salam alaikum, brother. So, we were talking about um, the message, and it's being received, and a lot of people are being rejectful. They're rejecting the message simply because it affects their wealth, it affects their idol worship. So, we're now going to look at the people who did accept Islam. I mean, at the time, was it an easy thing to do? Was it easy to accept Islam at that time? Well, not at all. Because, uh, as I told you, the message is simple. The message is message of fitrah. And, and you remember what fitrah means, if you can remind us? Natural inclination, the natural belief that there is a God, some being beyond our imagination. Exactly. So, the natural message, the simple message, was hitting people and it was going in their heart. So, I'll give you just two examples. You know, one of the slave men and one is a, non, a free man. You know, he's not, not a slave. You can imagine one of the greatest personality in Islam, his name is Bilal ibn Rabah. Was he the um, black Abyssinian slave? Exactly. Okay. So you can imagine he's a black Abyssinian man, dark skin, uh, working as a slave with the kuffar, the, the enemies of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the message of la ilaha illallah, there is no God except one God, went into his heart. What was it like to be a slave? I mean, like a lot of people, unfortunately, have this misconception that um, slaves were, you know, just brought in, and you know, it was always black. Because you know, in the, we know in the last twenty years, thirty years, well, actually, no, maybe forty, fifty years, um, in some parts of the world, black slavery was there. Was it black slavery at this time? Well, yes. Usually, Islam encourage everyone to free the slaves. It's not about to having the slave. When the Islam came, when the teachings came, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mm. told us to free the slave. If you made any mistake, you want, you want to, you know, you want to, uh, uh, seeking for forgiveness, if you mm. want to seek for forgiveness, free the slave. So free the slave. So there were slaves, there were dark-skinned, uh, but, you know, if, you, if there was ever a dark-skinned person around, you'd expect them or they was kind of seen as, as a slave and would you agree that at that time not many people like to respect dark exactly. people? Exactly, of course, before Islam. Before you know, Islam, yeah, Before of Islam, at that time calls uh, Jahiliya time, which is the ignorant time. You know, they have to do a lot of, lot of bad things, you know, yeah. uh, including, you know, uh, disrespecting the, 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 the slaves. They don't deal with the slaves as they are human. They don't deal with their wives as they are women and they are human. Uh, they used to bury their daughters because for them, daughter is a shame, you know. Yeah. So, oh, well, how dare that, you know, this man having having a daughter. So the man, before everyone knows that he he, he, he been blessed by God Almighty with a daughter, he take his daughter alive. So, so did Bilal accept Islam while he was a slave? Exactly. So he was a slave. The message of uh, the, the message of Islam, the message of La Ilaha Illallah, is spreading everywhere by the help of God Almighty and the effort of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. It went to Bilal's heart, and he felt the sweetness of La Ilaha Illallah. There is no God one except one God. So what he said, he said, "I'm a Muslim." A friend of all the tribe leaders and his his masters, he said, "I'm a Muslim." Was a slave. Exactly. That was very brave. He said, I am accepting Islam. I believe in Muhammad as a messenger, and I believe there's only one God, and that's it. So you can imagine, they are sitting, the kuffar, the, the non-believers, they are sitting, and, and they are gathering, you know, drinking and, mm. and having fun, and the, the slave comes, and he yeah. said, I want to accept Islam. I accepted Islam already, yeah. and I believed in Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a messenger of God. But obviously, while he accepted Islam, he still remained a slave. So there was not much you can do about that. Mm -hmm. But we're going to continue and talk about um, uh, Hazrat Bilal radiallahu anhu. Bilal, the, uh, may Allah be pleased with him. Um, a great companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So what we will do is we'll take a short break. We'll be back with you soon. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pearls of Prophet, peace be upon him. I'm your host Abdul Rahim. I have with me Muhammad Al Nakawi. Salam alaikum again, Sheikh. We were just talking about Bilal radiallahu an and his um, 
acceptance of Islam and he's just become a Muslim and he's just announced it to Quraysh or uh, the people around him to his masters actually. to his masters sorry mm -hmm. not Quraysh to masters what what happened next well you can imagine now people having fun and this slave so-called you know slave came in and he said I accepted there's only one God I accepted the message of mes uh, message of Muhammad and I believed in him as a messenger of God so there you know it was it was something really really you know difficult for them to hear that how dare you mm -hmm. you're a slave you have no right to talk to us you have nothing except to just serve us without of course any salary because slave well, they yeah. don't take anything so they said either you come back to what you you know used to be just believing in nothing or we will punish you i'm talking about the one who's slave now he said i will reject I'm not accepting what you're saying. I'm a Muslim. So what they did, they start torturing him. They start hitting, uh, uh, hitting him and beating him. What sort of things did they do when they torture? Because um, they must have done some really. Because I remember they did some really difficult things. Exactly. So you can imagine, like you know, when we say beating and torturing is like you know a person having having a stick or maybe you know that uh, the leather belt and maybe you know hitting. So it's things like whipping and. Exactly, but not only that. <coughs> They used to live in a, in a, you know, Arabian Peninsula. It's totally desert, and the most hottest, you know, place in the world. At that time, they took Bilal ibn Rabah, and they took his clothes, you know, and they put him on the sand. And you can imagine, at that time, there is no concept of AC and air condition and this and that, nothing. So, so it they was put him heavy, heavy heat, strong, exactly. strong, strong heat. They put him on the sand. Mm. The, the, you know, you cannot imagine unbearable hot sand they put on him they tied him up and they start beating him and the, he's saying come back come back to us we are your master worship us or something like that but what he was saying all the time he was saying ahadun ahad ahadun ahad that means only one god this only one god word ahad is a special word isn't it exactly one can talk a long time just to learn about this word ahad so true but in short it means one god so at the end they couldn't they couldn't you know, bear his argument, they bought a big, big, heavy rock and they put it and throw it on his chest so he cannot breathe. You know, it's a kind of yeah. torturing. Yeah. And he said, come back, come back. But he was saying, ahadun ahad, when until he... When he said ahadun ahad, did they torture him even more and more? Because there was a hadith, I think, that said, because he, someone who was asked later on, why did you say it? Why did you keep saying ahadun ahad? Exactly. So the more he's saying Ahadun Ahad, yes, he is feeling the, the, the pain and everything, but he's enjoying by saying there's only one God. I mm -hmm. accept there's only one God. And yes, what the difficulty that he's going through, you know, mm -hmm. he does not care about what's coming next. So until, you know, they tortured him and they put the big rock on his chest until mm -hmm. he, he, he fell unconscious. Mm -hmm. And later on, one of the greatest companion and the almost the one who accepted Islam at the early age, Abu Bakr, mm. you know, he used to be a businessman. Yeah. He came to the Kuffar Quraysh, the, the enemies of Islam, and the master of Bilal ibn Rabah. Yeah. And he said, I will buy this man, you know, from you. Yeah, so that was, was that his way out. That was kind of like his freedom. Exactly. But that's, that's interesting. I mean, especially because we know that a lot of the poor, was it the poor and the weak that first accepted Islam? Exactly. Um, you know, and that's something that was similar to previous prophets. But um, what I find interesting is that this man is a slave, okay? Now, if you're a human being and you are enslaved to another human being, then that would be a miserable thing. But we know in Islam that when you do submit to God, you are saying, when you do become Muslim or um, submit yourself peacefully, then you are, with your own free will, enslaving yourself to God. Now. At that time, what was Bilal thinking? I mean, was that a way for him to th feel his freedom? Because we know that if you enslave yourself to your car, if you enslave yourself to your wealth, if you enslave yourself to your women, if you enslave yourself to the world, then you're only worshipping the world. However, if you enslave yourself to the Creator, then you've become free. So, wonderful thing that you said. Once, the sweetness of La ilaha illallah goes to the person's heart, no matter what. It frees them. Exactly. It frees them, yes. Exactly. This is excellent. Mm -hmm. So, we've run out of time for today. 
We will join you next time. So until then, we will see you soon.